Salutations, spooks, spirits, and specters, and welcome back to Clan Ad, Katomi's Root. I just came back from a short break after uh, recentering my emotions after that uh, flashback. So I'm good and ready to go. And here it is, Friday morning. Katomi didn't come to school. Homeroom ends and classes start. I don't understand any of the subjects, but I sit through each and every one of them. If I'm going to wait for Katomi, I can't ditch these classes. That's what I tell myself. The formulas and names of the eras are nothing but mumbo-jumbo to my ears. The wind sometimes blows in through a half-open window. I gaze at the shimmering rays of light dancing on my desk. Thank <laughs> you. Sorry about that. Uh oh, here comes another. Thank you. Barrage. I head to the library right after morning classes end. Maybe, just maybe, Katomi might be there. She might be waiting for me with half of her lunch left over. That's what I tell myself. I slowly go to open the usual sliding door. It's locked. The air of the empty hallway feels alien to me. How long have I been standing here? Anna? A girl I've never seen before is standing next to me. She's wearing an armband on her left arm that says, Library Committee. Hiremasuka? No. I stand aside to let her unlock and open the door. <sighs> the aroma of books and dust is carried on the chilly breeze. Echoes of her words seem to fade between the books. The library is soon filled with students here to study and chat. The sounds of notebook pages turning, the scratching of pencils, whispered laughter. No one is here to read books. I turn around and leave. After school, I go to the drama club room. I open the door like I usually do, but find the room empty. I grab a chair and wait. Everyone else should be here soon. Kyo, Fujibayashi, Fubukawa, and Katomi. That's why I wait. Every time I hear a sound from the hallway, I partly open my eyes and look to the sliding door. No one shows up. It feels as if it were all a mirage. We were all orbiting around her. It was only two days ago. Kyo made impossible demands. Fujibayashi was kind and reserved. Fubukawa was serious to a fault and tried her best at everything. Katomi was becoming more and more cheerful. She shined so brightly in my eyes. I enjoyed being in that circle of friends. But now it all feels like something happened long ago. <clears throat> Katomi is still in that dark house. She's desperately clinging to a past to which she's chained. She's running away from the happiness she finally found. She's running away from her new life, her friends, and me. <clears throat> Katomi is trying to leave everything behind. I need to find the words to explain. I need to find the exact words that can connect Katomi to her future. How can I tell her? What can I say? 
I sit here with my mind still clouded, waiting. By the time I realize it, the sun has already set. I stand up to leave the drama club room. And... When I arrive at Katomi's house, it's already evening. The fading yellow light saturates the roof, walls, and window sills. I press the doorbell. Two times, three times, four times. Nothing happens. I start to doubt if the bell even works. <clears throat> I look around, but don't see light coming from any of the windows. <clears throat> Yet I know. Katomi is inside, holding her breath like an injured stray cat. This door will not open from the outside. It's nobody's fault. Katomi is only keeping her promise. I follow the path to get into the garden. The chorus of insects echo like the night. The garden of Katomi's childhood. Any lingering traces of the happy days of her past are completely gone. With no words or means to bring them back, I stand there in the overgrown grass. The plants have grown chaotically in neglect. Their names have long since been forgotten. They quietly surround me as if to reproach the intruder. I place my fingers on the glass door that leads to the living room. It opened yesterday, but does not budge today. <clears throat> I return to the front and press the doorbell one last time. Still no answer. I sigh and turn to leave, but then... Okazaki-san! I hear someone's voice. I turn around and see Furukawa standing there. Her brownish hair flutters in the passing evening wind. Koko... She meekly looks up at the second floor. Considering the state of the house is in, considering the state the house is in, Fubukawa must realize it. It's a house that has been a stranger for over a decade to the warm sounds of a happy home and the aromas of a dinner. It's too big of a house for one person to live in alone. Kotomi-chan, <clears throat> Furukawa asks me. Well, I didn't really get to talk to her. There's an awkward silence as neither of us speaks for a bit. How did you find this place? Kotomi-chan yeah, it's kind of hard to find. Our conversation stalls again. And I'm about to sneeze too. Thank you! Thank you! Apologies, apologies. She probably hasn't calmed down enough to pull herself together. はい。私もそう思います。詳しいことはわかりませんが、コトミちゃんは今すごく悩んでいるんだと思います。コトミちゃんが苦しい思いをしているのなら放ってはおけないです。I see. I look at the road through the gatepost. Kids that look like they just entered elementary school are playing on their way on their way home. So what happened with the club? It didn't meet yesterday or today. I'm sorry. It didn't meet yesterday or today. 
しばらくお休みにしました今はもっと大事なことがありますから昨日きょうちゃんとりょうちゃんと私と3人で話したんです私たちは私たちでことみちゃんのためにできることをしようって And what did you decide? 秘密です。That sounds like something Kyo would say. Come to think of it, Kyo is probably the mastermind and told Furukawa to keep it a secret. Then at least give me a hint. Hinto ですか Yeah, a simple one. えっと、誕生日です。I get it. So they're probably getting together to give Katomi some kind of present. <coughs> It's something they would think about. She asked that in such an earnest way that I can't help but laugh. No matter how complicated the situation, the simplest way forward might be to think about what you can actually do. Fubukawa and the rest decided to do something for Katomi. There has to be something only I can do for her. Katomi's birthday is on the 13th, right? Hi, Katomi chan. Kono mai so it de mashta. Today is Friday the 9th, so that's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. There's only three days left. Is there enough time? I have no idea. But just thinking about it won't solve anything. Can you tell Kyo and Fujibayashi something for me? I'm gonna skip school tomorrow and Monday, but don't worry about me. Yeah, I'll need the next three days. Ah, Founders Festival. Now that she mentions it, there's always something like that around this time of year. はい。当日は文化部の発表会もあるんです。演劇部はまだ部活ではありませんから、参加できないですけど。Oh. To the third year students, these are the last school events they'll get to have in high school. It must be an important time for Fubukawa. And I'm about to sneeze again, so apologies in advance. And yet Fubukawa would exchange it in a heartbeat for the sake of her friend. Thanks for coming here. Yeah. Sorry to make you worry about me. Okazaki-san. She says my name again in a serious tone. Yeah? Kotomi-chan wo gakkou ni modoshite agete kudasai. Kitto, sore ga dekiru no wa sekai jiu de Okazaki-san dake desu. You're exaggerating. Ougesa dewa nai desu. Fubukawa is peering into me. It isn't embarrassing, it just feels strange. It's like moonlight peeking through a snowy sky. It's quiet and reassuring, but also a little sad. I'll do my best. I answer her. Hi! Fubukawa nods. Take care. As if dragging her long shadow with her shoes, Fubukawa heads home. Phew. I'm all alone again. Darkness falls. I stare at it 
as the ground soaks it up. There's probably only one thing I can do. However, because I've forgotten about Katomi all this time, I might not have the right to do it. It's just... It's just too sad to see the garden to be so neglected. And as Saturday begins, I shall bring the video to a close. So thank you all very much for watching. And ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs>